Now I'm going to be tying a mayfly part on the dry fly, this one here. Now this fly uh, is called the ginger mayfly, it was originally tied by a gentleman called Dennis Moss. Now he uses, the materials he uses for the, the fly, for the tail, it's a dyed yellow, this is grey squirrel. For the wing, he uses a dyed olive fox tail. This is from the base of the tail, it's much shorter, it's ideal for doing wings. For the body, using ginger seals for, you can use a sub. Now, normally I would use a saddle, is ideal, but I don't have one, so I've got a neck here. This is a, basically it's a furnace, but it's quite light in the furnace. But I'm using the larger hackles, you see, but then I'm going to use two, and the main reason for that, I'm to show you, is the fact that Half the, the feather is black in these feathers, so and I need the tips, so I'm going to be throwing away half of half of these. So I'm going to have to use two to get the, the volume of hackle that I need, and the hackle length should be less than the wing length, just slightly less. So anyway, thread. The Dennis uses a black thread. I'm going to use a an olive, an A O in uni. Now, hook. This is a. Camasan, it's a B170 size 10. Now start at the eye and I'm going halfway down the shank, remove the base piece and then come back up halfway and this will give me the position for the wing. Now so we've got the fat fox here now from the base of the tail they're quite short. Now the wing's not too heavy so I've taken out a few fibres enough to form the wing. Now you see the tips are quite close, well lined up. There we are. There's a nice blend of some guard here there which is ideal for the wing. Length of the wing, now it can be quite long actually, so but to keep a nice balance in the fly, I'm gonna use the full length of the hook for the length of the wing tied forward. So just pinch a loop on the top, three or four turns, and then just leave the wing this point over the eye. But come over with your scissors and then come down at an angle cut trim away the materials basically this will help you give get a taper in your body now what I do here is tips of my fingers just to control the tips of the waist ends and then I wind touching turns with the thread and sliding my fingers as I go and you can see that it controls the tips of the cut ends and as you can see there as well, you get that nice taper in the body. Helps you build it up. Now, the tail, as I say, is a dyed yellow squirrel. Now, you take off a few fibres. Now, have a wee quick look. I'm lining them up slightly by bringing them 90 degrees from the stem of the tail. Now, see, you can exaggerate the tail. Just look at these fibres. Trim them away, but I'm going to stack them up to get a good colour. Uh, the good blend of the tips and the, the darker side of the fibre. Just put it into your hair stacker. Tap on your desk. Lined up. Again, have another look. Now you see much. There's probably an odd broken one there you don't want. That's fine, I'll do it. Length of the tail. Just say, look at it, at least the length of the hook. Now have the cut ends facing yourself and use that turn to lift, tail on top, come underneath the fibres, let the tip of the tail go and then use that turn to lift. So lock it in and then a turn on top and that's it done. That'll hold it while you tie the rest of the, or get, carry on with the rest of the fly. Now trim at the length of the body which is there, all the fibres, there we are. Now I'm just going to Get control these cut ends. I'm just going to quickly run the thread up and then back down. You know, obviously, you want to start the body in line with the barb of the hook. Get we're dubbing. Use the finger and thumb of your, in my case, my left hand to get so it's an anchor point and then twist my finger and thumb my right hand and just twist the one way and then feed the dubbing onto the thread. 
how I do it. Now the the dubbing's well blended, so it blends. It goes on very easy if you do that. Now the anchor point, you slide it up. The anchor point now is going to be on the the shank of the hook, so then I can twist with the the dubbing if I need it. See where it's going to start. I'm just going to go down a bit. Make sure it's starting right at the tail. There we are. And then we start to work our way up. The taper's there. We're we ready to put the taper in we're using the cut ends of the, the wing. So we're just winding our way up, controlling the turns. Stop it. We're looking a couple of mil from the wing. Make sure everything's neat. Trim away any excess. Don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it just to show you the shape of the body as well. Just watch your ring when you do that. Now, I've got my two feathers. I'm ready here. Oh, there we are. Both lined up. Tips lined up. Pick the best part of the hackle. I'm just going to try this here. There we are, so look at the length as well. So if you bring the fibres out and put the stem in line with the body, this will give you the length of the hackle. So I want to come up a wee bit, because there's tape on the way from there. So. There we go. So see, I've got to use two hackles just to get the volume of hackle fibres that I need to tie the fly. Now, as you see, I've cut both ends, both the same length. I've got two hackles sitting with the underside of the, the hackles facing myself. Catch them just at the body there. Work down, tie them in. Lift the wing. Then I'm going to lock the, the wing up with a few turns in at the root. In front, not on the wing. Just to basically push them up and then carry one down to the eye. Just about a mil from the eye. So have a look at your wing at this point, see how it's sitting. That's fine. Now you want to wind these hackles down together. Now just you're looking at least three turns at the back. Lift the wing and all the fibres that's going towards the eye, draw them back. And it's important that you get a good turn of hackle fibres in there. Just watch what you're doing at this point. I may have to go back. Sometimes it doesn't sit the first time. Second time usually sits all okay. And as you can see, using your fingers, I, I find it easier than hackle pliers, especially with two hackles. And it's important that you keep them both the same length. As I say, they get they turn really tight into the wing, and then wind down, Just keeping a hold of the tips. All the to your happy. Which I am there. A couple of turns or so there. I can fold back tips of the hackle. Tidy the head area up. Just ignore everything at this point and then we can whip finish. You can trim away the or just basically it's easy just to break off the tips. Turn away your thread, and there we are. Now we can bring these fibres out where they should be because we did force the fibres back. Now, what then does he uh, trims away the hackle underneath, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to bring the fibres either side, and you can brush them up. Or in this case, I'm going to use Velcro just to bring them up either side. You'll see the fibres, they'll sit, they'll, the ones that want to go ones that's maybe coming from the other side, just pull them back I see then hold them. Now you could use a resin but what you're looking for is a, a print. You don't want the hackle fibres to go below the shank of the hook because uh, you want an impression or a, sh uh, a print of the fly on the surface and this is the best way to do it. So I said just hold them. Get, I'm going to use a clear varnish as I say, you could use a resin, it's up to yourself. Just 
lightly. Put some varnish on. It's very light this varnish, it's I've thinned it right down so and then come in and then varnish the head all the way around. Now what I'm gonna do here before it sets obviously bring the hackle fibers on the side down so they're flat so you get a more of a half moon shape. And there we are. That's the, the ginger mayfly. It's a nice fly, nice pattern. Uh, the Arctic Fox in the Wing looks really good dyed olive, so it's the Wenger olive I used to get the colour.